Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue and I'm bringing you all this next video in the Cool Blue and Cardboard series. Uh, so we'll be playing, I'll be playing Final Girl as you see set up on the table. Uh, in this particular video will be the setup. Uh, if you want to know, I've done, uh, this will be a three video series for Final Girl. Uh, the first video that I did was a review slash commentary on the game and some aspects of the game. Uh, this video specifically, the second video will be about setup. So I'm just gonna literally just talk through some stuff while setting up the game. So hopefully it'll take me less than 30 minutes. And then finally, uh, the final playthrough or the final video in the series will be the actual play of this. And uh, as you can see on the table, I'm gonna be playing with these components here. Uh, for those who don't know, Final Girl is a solo only game to where your goal is to basically try to stop the killer or achieve the goals. Uh, and you're kind of dealing with the Final Girl trope, which Final Girl trope, if you also know, is in horror movies and usually horror movies or slasher films. The killer's doing the killer's thing and then the, there's always that one girl, that one final girl who goes in and she has to overcome perilous odds to defeat the, the villain to survive. Or maybe not, maybe she'll perish. So this game basically takes that trope and runs with it. It uses the hostage negotiator, uh, hostage negotiator sim, uh, system. Um, and actually, well, I haven't played the hostage negotiator system, so I don't know. Uh, I don't have much context outside of what other people say. But the other thing to note is that um, mechanics of this game are dice rolling, hand management. Uh, it's modular. It's also pick up and deliver. And it's based on the hostage negotiator, hostage negotiator system. So cool. All right, so we actually have here all the things we need. Um, I will be playing as um, Adelaide, so this is actually the actual final girl I'm going to be playing, and I'm going to I'm going to be playing on the location Sacred Groves. So let me get the Sacred Groves map out here. And the enemies or the villains that I'll be fighting will be the Terror from Above villains, uh, which is the birds. So I'll be fighting the birds. So me versus the birds. Also, uh, as a note for those who don't know, with these boards because they do sit up like that sometimes, the designer said you can take this and fold it back. It's designed to be folded back, so it lays flat, so I'll take their word for it. But if it breaks, then I guess I'll just buy it again. No, I'm joking, I won't buy it again. Uh, so I'll put them here. And uh, let me zoom out so we can get a more of a full view of the table. Um, I'm keeping this here for a second, because uh, this will be where the main stuff will be. And on the zoomed out view, which I unfortunately don't have an automatic thing, so I have to do it manually, my bad, for all the shakiness. The zoomed out thing will be here. So let me see, can I zoom out a little bit more? Eh, a little bit too far. Now you're seeing the edge of the table. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. There we go. So, um, the final girl I'll be playing will be Adelaide, as I mentioned before. Um, I'll put her down here. And the enemy I'll be fighting will be, fight, will, will be Terror from Above. So Terror from Above, actually I keep in this box here because I've sleeved all my cards for Terror from, the, from Above. Uh, you don't have to sleeve your cards, but I did. And if you do, then they won't fit in the original box. So the Terror from Above comes with all of these cards here. So it comes with uh, the bird's bloodlust card, which is there. It comes with all the terror cards for the bird, which uh, you can tell by the backs, which say terror. And then it also comes with the kind of finale, final abilities and some rule sheets. So let me get all this organized here. Ah, man. There we go. Cool, so we'll put this down. So what we have here is uh, we have the power card, so that goes to the side. And then also we have the Dark Power and Finale. So we have three of each. So there's three of each of these cards. Uh, what we'll do is we'll randomly select one of each of these. So we have one Dark Power and one Finale. So what I'll do is I'll just shuffle this because it's only, it's only six cards uh, total. So three cards of each. So I'm shuffling this the best I can and I'm gonna draw the first Dark Power I see in first Finale. There we go, shuffled, cool. Right, so I'll put this here like so, and I think it works better if I overlap it like that. So when the uh, the things are revealed, they'll be revealed. Uh, let me zoom in again, because I, I do have to stage this for uh, actual the actual playthrough video. So I think that should be fine. There should be enough space to see everything, right? So you got your dark power right there, and got your other ability. Um, these cards, I'm just putting like that for compactness, but you probably would want to give a little bit more space. I'm gonna shift this board up because we don't really need to see all of the item stuff or the title, really. And that gives me a little bit more space down here to put Adelaide. And, oh, oh. Oh, sorry, I got a crinkle on my table here. Oh no! There we go, sorry. My, my uh, surface was shifting a little bit more than I was ready for. Ah, there we go. Jeez, that was weird. Everything's stable. <laughs> Hopefully. 
Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like when I zoom out, but yeah. All right, cool. So yeah, you all are kind of seeing a little bit behind the scenes. So I'm going to take the rest, of, let me zoom back out. I'm going to take the rest of the cards uh, here and put those back in the box because I don't need them. And then for the tarot cards, I'm going to take the tarot cards. The uh, birds have 16 tarot cards. So there's 16 here. Uh, last time I counted, which I don't, maybe I counted correctly. Uh, these sheets here, this is a spawn birds card. This is a reference card. I need this during the game. And these other ones tell me how to set up the birds. These cards front and back tell me how to set up the birds. Um, I'll read that out once we, once we get to that section. But for right now, I'll put the spawn birds card right there. And I'll put these white cards here to the side. These are the birds themselves. Uh, they come in these little punch boards. Um, I like to put mine back in the punch board so I can store it a little bit easier. You don't have to do that. They're just uh, they're just um, 36 tokens. So 36 little tokens. Uh, one side has one bird. The other side has three birds. Uh, representation of three birds. And now we have the Sacred Groves location box. Um, so I have actually not played on Sacred Groves yet. This is my first time playing it live. So that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Uh, but at any rate, uh, Sacred Groves comes with this stuff, so I'm assuming I need all this stuff. Uh, it comes with its own set of tarot cards, and it comes with this little special board, along with this other stuff down here, uh, which these are... Sorry, this is like a... I think this is something I need to add to the birds. Uh, I'll, I'll read the rules to figure out how that works in a second. And then all these tokens are various tokens that can possibly show up uh, in the game. There's like a do not cross sign and some other stuff. So I'll put those over here to the side. Because we won't really need to... Well, let me put this off screen. Because we won't really need those until we need those. And we got the other cards in here. So we have the tarot cards, like I said before. I'll put those down here. We have the other cards. These are the setup. So these are the setup, the item cards, and the event cards. So I'm going to give these a good shuffle individually. Uh, I don't think there's... I don't think there's traps inside of this one. There's no traps, okay, cool. So I'm gonna shuffle the item cards, and uh, assuming that it follows the normal setup rules as uh, with the other games, uh, with the other um, modules, I'm going to draw three decks of four. So one, two, sorry, one, two, three, and then four, like that. And then I'm gonna flip over the top card of each deck. And once again, I'm just kind of going off of muscle memory at this point, because I don't know if Sacred Groves is set up differently for the item deck. This is typically what you do for the other item decks, so that's what we're doing here. So I got an aluminum bat, an old rifle, and I finally have a trash can lid. So these are the starting items, or sorry, th those are, these items correspond to locations. So you see here, Welcome Center, Lost and Found, Groundkeeper's, uh, Groundkeeper's Shed, and those are located here, Welcome Center, uh, Lost and Found, Groundkeeper Shed. Those are locations where I can go and search for those items or try to get those items. The ones that are face down, they'll get flipped face up once I actually look at them uh, and try to take them. But otherwise, they stay, they stay a mystery. We shuffle the event cards here, which are the blue ones. Uh, is that zooming in? No, focus. There we go. We shuffle these event cards, and we're going to draw one at the start of the game. So this one I have is Hollowed Ground. So Hollowed Ground uh, says that... Uh, roll a dice and place the hollow ground token on the, and then it gives me some selections. Anytime you end your action phase here, gain two time. So it's actually a boon. That's actually a benefit for me. Nice. So it's going to go here. And there can be mul there, there will be likely multiple events in this game as we go along. So multiple events can show up. All right, so that's that. And where is the dice? Oh, there in the core box. Actually, let me finish setting this up. So I'm going to shuffle the birds. So I take the birds tarot cards and I mix it with the locations tarot cards. So there's, uh, like I said, 16. Well, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, 16 bird cards. And then there's, I think there's eight of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep. And then I shuffle those together. So I get those as good of a shuffle as I can with sleeves. Um, I can do the sorting shuffle, but I'm just going to do a normal shuffle that I wouldn't recommend because these sleeves are fine. I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, these are some matted sleeves that I actually like. I actually um, have a whole bunch of these. There was one point to where, for some reason, buying uh, buying 10 boxes of these sleeves on, on uh, Amazon. For some reason, buying 10 boxes of these sleeves on Amazon was only like $15. So I bought like a lot of them. <laughs> so so I, I, you, you'll probably see these show up in a lot of my games with uh, these particular sleeves. All right, there we go. 
So these are all shuffled. I shuffle as I can get them. And then out of this deck of 24 cards, out of this deck of 24 cards, I'm going to take 10 and only 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 10 tarot cards. And I'm going to put the tarot cards over here. Because I think that should be work for uh, positioning stuff. I'm going to take the rest of the tarot cards and secretly put them away. Um, I won't need them. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll sort these back out later after I'm done with the game. Hoping for a victory here. And we have this Divine Wrath card, which I don't know what it does yet. Uh, like I said, I haven't played on this one. And then last, we have this setup. So we take these setup cards, which are green backs, and we flip them over. And this will tell me how to set things up. Now, the setup for the birds is a little bit different from normal normal uh, villains. So with the birds, um, they will be where the K is. And uh, I will spawn three birds in that spot. Um, elsewise, I will spawn or spawn everybody else. So I put the final girl here where it says to put the final girl. And then I put people where it says put people. And then uh, otherwise, I'm going to spawn birds in all other spots. Just one bird total. And uh, the game in condition, the losing condition for this game are if I die or if every location has three birds in it. So that's kind of the overrun feature. So I want to make sure I don't get overrun. Uh, overrun scenario, I should say, not feature. All right, so I'm gonna spawn three birds here in the groundkeeper shed. Oh, three birds, let me zoom in so I can see it. So I'm gonna spawn three birds where the K is, where the killer is. This is gonna get a little bit, uh, so my apologies if you have any OCD, but I'll try to keep this as straight as I can, but can only do but so much. Uh, so three birds there, and then we're gonna spawn victims. So in the box, I'm gonna open that up, and get my rules here. And then get my other rules here. And then get this out of the way. I'm trying to get to the victims. And then open that up. Man, that's a lot to open up. And in this tray, we have our victims, which are yellow. The final girl is pink. Like this. That's the final girl. And the killer is usually red, but we only have one killer. This other, this other killer token is not going to be you, so I'll just leave it in there. But we have one killer and one final girl. Uh, this killer will be placed on the board over to the side, which I'll zoom out and show you later. But the final girl we put here, according to the setup. And then we're going to spawn uh, victims in the yellow. So we're going to spawn four victims where that rock is. All right. And we're going to spawn four down where the lost and found is. And then we're gonna spawn one and two of the sacred grounds, so the sacred shrines and the burial grounds. And then we're gonna spawn uh, one in that spot next to the birds and that spot next to me. All right, there we go. Should be fine. Trying to do some packing there. Cool, all right. Oh, my bad, I didn't realize I got blurry. Uh, my apologies, okay. Okay, cool. Now that we've done that, uh, let us do the next thing, which since I now have access to the dice, I'm going to roll the die for the events, which is hollow ground right there. So hollow ground says um, I roll a dice and based on what I roll, I will put that little token there, the um, hollow to ground token, which is this. Let me roll. I got a five. So five to six is going to be the whole, uh, the Holy Groves, which is, uh, oh, am I covering it? I think I'm covering it. Yeah, there it is. Cool. All right. So that particular location, uh, if I end my turn there, I will get two time and time is what I spend to actually buy cards uh, later on. Cause I have to buy cards continuously. All right, cool. So that's all set up for that. Uh, and now we, oh sorry, that's not all set up. Sorry, now we spawn birds. So now we're gonna put one bird in every space where there's no people or no starter birds. So there's gonna be a bird there, there, and all over the place. Birds everywhere. The birds? All right, there we go. 
All right, so we got all the birds spawned, and those birds are mean and nasty and evil, so I got to deal with them. Uh, that's going to be fun on this sacred groves. And now we need to figure out how the Divine Wrath stuff, because I've, I've seen it played before, but I didn't understand how it worked. So I will go ahead and look up that sheet. So our sheet for this one will actually be here, uh, Sacred Groves. So I'll put this on the overhead view, which I haven't used at all, but it exists. So I'll put it over here, because maybe this will be useful. Somewhat readable. Um, I can't read it because I'm a little too far away. Let me see if I can get that to be readable for me without breaking anything. Hmm. There we go. Perfect. All right. So uh, it's, a little, it's a little bit jumpy, but it's fine. It's readable. Uh, oh, it's a little bit blurry, though. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this to focus. It's focused. That's that's mostly readable, right? I can mostly read that from my uh, view over here. So in this one, uh, special setup is what I'm looking for down at the bottom. So special setup says, set up the game as normal with the following changes when playing the Sacred Groves. Uh, place a Divine Wrath card in the play area and place the tracking marker on level two. So, uh, ooh, I need space for that, don't I? Um, I will put it above the birds. So let me move this out of the way. And pull this down. And I will put the Divine Wrath uh, track, which I think was that cardboard thing. Here it is. Put it right there. Oh, it says Divine Wrath card. My bad. Sorry. That totally says Divine Wrath card. So put that there. So I put the Divine Wrath there and I take one of the markers that the game gives me and I put it on number two. I put it on number two. Okay. Oh gosh. Like so. All right. And the next thing I do is uh, place a Sacred Grove's Bloodlust track directly to the right of the kill uh, Chosen Killer's board, lining it up with the bottom of the Killer's Bloodlust track. Uh, I don't know how it's gonna work because there's more steps in this one than there are in the birds. So, it's telling me to do that. Now, normally the killers would have more steps in their uh, track, probably equi uh, equivalent to what we see here. So if I bring out, um, we bring out the poultry guys for a second. If I bring out the poultry guys, and I kind of place this here to the side, I can see that that lines up, well, mostly, <laughs> lines up like so. So I don't know how the lining up of this will be with uh, this, this situation. All right, so we put the Chosen Killer there. Um, place the Sacred Girls Bloodless Track directly to the right of the Chosen Killer's board, lining it up with the bottom. Okay, with the bottom, right. Man, reading comprehension, y'all. I'm telling you, it'll save a life. So the birds are not gonna do that much on the Bloodlust Track, which is cool. So they're not gonna go all the way up there. And uh, set the Sacred Groves finale token uh, to the side. It is only needed when the finale is revealed. So it's a Sacred Groves finale token. Oh, that's this. That's this. Uh, we can't see. Yeah, there we go. It's this. So as I said, set this to the side, uh, that is only needed when the enemy's finale is, is uh, revealed. So when the birds get to their finale, which uh, they get to their finale once the terror card runs out, once the terror deck runs out, then that shows up. So for right now, we're gonna put that to the side because we will not need it, as the game says. <laughs> All right, cool. And then uh, include both atonement action cards in the action tableau, uh, including, or these are included in, in with Inkinyamba. Okay, so I need to go find Inkinyamba. And there's action cards under Inkinyamba that say atonement. There they are, found them. And I'll put those with the location. All right, so these are the atonement cards. I'll throw them on the green screen since we're using the green screen here. These are the atonement cards, uh, right there. That's weird, but 
okay, we'll go with it. And that that green is actually, or that yellow is actually green, but we'll go with it. Um, so those are those cards do. Um, those will show up as we play along. So let me put these away because I'll put those in my tableau. And I think that's all I do. Is that all I do? Let me see. Other side. Uh, special rules, divine wrath. Whenever you are instructed to increase or decrease the divine wrath symbol, move the tracking marker on the divine wrath card up or down. Uh, the appropriate number of levels, the market or the marker can never move or never be below one or above ten. So ignore any additional increases or de decreases once you get there. Whenever you are instructed to unleash divine wrath, check the level of divine wrath and apply the effects. Uh, whenever bloodlust increase, in addition to applying the effects of the killer board, such as increasing the horror level or killer's dark power, you must also apply the effect, if listed, uh, in the matching line of the Sacred Grove's bloodlust track. Okay, so basically there's multiple, there's multiple effects. So there's this, for instance, there's this event, plus there's increase the Divine Wrath by number of victims uh, on Sacred Grove's, or Sacred Spaces. Okay, understood. And uh, some items or card effects will allow you to reduce the Divine Wrath, um, but the primary way is to purchase and play the Atonement cards, which we looked at earlier. Uh, if the finale is triggered, take the Sacred Grove's finale token and place it on top of the finale card. During the Killer's phase, after that Killer's action is complete, you also, or you must unleash uh, Divine Wrath and then increase Divine Wrath by one, as indicated by the token. Okay, got it. All right. Oh, and there's uh, another thing down here. Sacred spaces. Sacred spaces are a new type of space on Sacred Grove's location board, the burial ground shrine, and blah. Uh, the more victims that are located on the sacred spaces, the angrier the gods may become, and there's a higher chance that the divine wrath will increase. Got it. Okay, cool. That was, that was a nice little segue into uh, what all that did. Thanks, game. Thanks for being informative. All right, cool. So we're almost set up. Thing right now, now that we know what's going on, or now that I know what's going on, I should say, let me clean up a little bit here and get some of this out of the way. And then we'll set up the other half of the board, which we'll all see briefly. And then we'll start our playthrough. So I'll put that there. Oh, let me zoom out. So I got a lot of dead space over there, which I'll just put this over there. So I'm not going to be able to reach that. I mean, I can, I can reach it, but it's a little bit out of the way. And uh, I gotta choose my character, which I'm choosing Adelaide, and Adelaide is gonna have six health. So let me uh, get six health. So, oh, can't see my health. There we go. So one, two, three, and then four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna get randomly one of these black tokens. So here we are. So I'm going to shuffle these to the best of my ability, these little small tokens that we can see here. Uh, we, there we go. I'm going to shuffle these to the... Oh, well, that one's obviously blank. Um, I'm going to shuffle these to the best of my ability without revealing anything. Uh, I'll try to do it on camera, but it's a little bit difficult to shuffle these tiny little tokens. Especially when it's out of focus. There we go. Uh, almost there. And I'll choose this one that goes there. The rest of these will secretly go back into the box without me looking at them. These other tokens here, oh, I missed one. That could be bad for me, I don't know yet. These other tokens here will go to the uh, side because I might need those later. When the uh, locations become overflow or over, yeah, have a lot of people on them. I'll take these and put them over to the side. Sorry, I'll take these and put them over to the side. Off screen. And then I will get the action cards. So these are all the other final girls. If you want to see them all, they're there in my hand. And uh, these are the action cards that I'll have for the game. And these cards have a few pieces of information on them. So let me bring them up to the big sh or to the overlay. So this is a search card, and this is a weak attack card. Ooh. And finally, this is a improvised card. So the way these cards work, the way these cards work is essentially um, when I play them, I will have to roll on, uh, according to the horror level. The horror level is determined by this track back here, 
uh, that track you see back there, uh, the final girl track, depending on where this starts or where this is, which the birds will start on four, determines how many dice I get to roll. So I only get to roll two dice once the horde, or while the horde track is there. If the horde track ever goes back here, I get three dice instead. And if it ever goes down here, then I get one dice instead. So I definitely want to try to get the horror down so I can reduce the, uh, the horror or the helplessness, if you will. Uh, but that determines how many dice I roll. <clears throat> um, also in the cards, we see um, uh, if I get successes. So the dice themselves have uh, three different sides. They have blank sides. They have partial success sides. And then they also have uh, full success sides. Partial success sides. And then they have full success sides. So a partial success can be made into a full success if I discard two cards without playing their effects to uh, make it an automatic success. The no success is a, a fail, obviously, and then the success is a success. So I need two successes to get the top effect in all those cards. I need one success to get the middle effect, and I need, or if I get no, no successes, then I get that bottom effect. Um, also in the bottom corner of each of these cards is the cost. That cost is relevant for when I'm actually buying cards during my planning phase. So when it comes to my planning phase, I'll be buying cards, and uh, the cost of those will be based on that. The money that I'll be spending, the currency I'll be spending, will be called time. And time is actually tracked by this little marker here. If I can get it out. There we go. So it goes over here. And time is tracked by this. So the more time I have, the more money I have. And then after my planning phase is over, this will be reset to six. So I go back to six time. Six is the, the, the default time. And uh, then I'll continue through. Uh, and as you can see on the walk card, for instance, uh, there's abilities when, uh, or there's effects that can make me lose time. And that means that I have less money to spend during the planning phase. So that's kind of, kind of the, the bones of this game. Uh, the meat and potatoes, if you will. And let me uh, clean up all this so I can actually get myself something uh, not as uh, chaotic <laughs> as my room is sometimes. So we got everything set up over there. We got all the things set that we need set. Um, I don't think I need anything else right now. So I'll put all of these, uh, I'll put all of this over here. Cause like I said, I just wanna fill in the space. It's gonna be a waste of space for now. And I'll put the spawn birds card over there too. Oh, there's a token I missed. All the birds, we'll put them right there with the burbs. Just gonna put the spawn birds, that's the burbs. And then uh, these final girls, I don't need them. So I'll put them over here. I probably need two of these. I just need one. Okay, cool. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out all these cards. So these are the ones. Uh, these are the twos, the atonements. And I do not have access to these cards initially. On my first turn, I will have access to all of the zeros. Once again, on my first turn, I'll have access to all of the zeros. There we go. Then this is a three. Where the box go? Sure. So I have all these zeros. This is a four, four, six, five, a four, sprint. And another three. Oh, we're in a visual space here. Uh, these are all my zeros. Oh. Guard, guard, sprint, search. Two searches, distraction. All right, cool. Improvise. There we go. All right, let me see how we can get this visually on the table. Uh, move this out of the way. Move the birds further down here since I can kind of reach out a little bit easier nowadays. Give me a little bit more space. Spawn birds. There's our cards. Close call. Uh, atonements. Search. Sprint. And I think I got everything on screen except for uh, that one card. Like I said, some some behind the scenes stuff for y'all for uh, how it, how <laughs> how the uh, struggle is for trying to get everything to show up on screen. It's not easy. It's a it's a game in a game, if you will. It's like a puzzle in the game. Put this up here. You don't need that anymore for visual. 
And I think that'll be fine. Actually, I want to keep this empty. Can y'all see that? All right. So what I plan on doing is I plan on playing my cards here so I can stay zoomed in so we can focus on the board. And then once I'm actually going to purchase, I'll zoom out into this view so we can actually see what I'm purchasing or if, if we need to. Uh, spawn birds, I'll put them over there. All right. And we're all set. <clears throat> so I'll also try to roll the dice on the overlay screen. Um, but that's pretty much it. So uh, that's it for the setup. As you can see, you know, even with me yapping on along, uh, it doesn't take long to set up the game. Uh, this did take 30 minutes because I had to read the rules for how Sacred Grows worked because uh, it's my first time playing on it. But we're all set and ready to go. In the next video, I'll actually be doing the playthrough and uh, we'll see how I do. Uh, will I survive? Will I not survive? Who knows? Go ahead and check out the next video to find out. All right. Uh, so as always, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all whenever.